Where you is you have your metal display? <laughs> yeah. He's not lying when he says sailor hat. <laughs> he is That's not so lying. Crazy. <laughs> that girl, when I first started working for him, um, I kind of like took it from her because he used to keep it in her diaper bag. No joke. <laughs> and I took it out of it. So I was like, this can't, it's can't like, yeah. this, you can't leave this in here. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to touch it. Like, you can't leave it in here. And I hid it in his office from her. Mm-hmm. And she got so mad at me because <laughs> like, wow. Ingrained in her, like this is just like my, it's Toy. mine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's not kidding when he humbly says he lets his daughter have it. It's <laughs> yeah. true. That's pretty cool. Well, because you it's not, it's not really it. about, it's not really about the metal. You know what no. I mean? It's about what oh, he did. No. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's that's. I mean, that just shows who he is. It yeah. really does. Okay. It does. Right. Well, mm-hmm. and. And I can honestly say I've met some higher metal honor, like people who've earned amazing honor in the military. Mm-hmm. They all say that. Yeah. Like right. anybody who has earned that type of recognition, that type of honor, like they, you could sit there and be starstruck about them and mm-hmm. compliment them. And they just sit there and they're like, I did my job. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and Dakota always says, he's like, I did it terribly. Like I didn't, <sighs> This isn't because I like got an A plus in class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is because something terrible happened. Mm-hmm. And it's it's crazy. I'm not I'm a civilian. I'm not a military vet at all. But hearing someone who I respect hundred and ten percent and hearing the whole story behind it, I'm like, I can't help but kind of just see where you're coming from and yeah. be like, I I, I understand. Mm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it just it's seems truly like, humbling. Yeah, just like a a real person, a yeah. real caring person, mm-hmm. and a real yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean the the minuscule amount that people get to see on social media is what I get every day. <laughs> mm-hmm. And when people say, you know, like, what's it like to work with him? Um, it's basically so I'm the youngest of five. And, um, it's basically just having like an, a six, like another sibling. Like he is my yeah. big brother. He like, people can say like, Oh yeah, he was amazing to have on that podcast. And I'm like, dude, try like mm-hmm. telling him that like, you're really depressed one day or like you have really bad anxiety and having that person call you up and like <laughs> dig you out of a hole. Um, I'm like, yeah. it's life changing. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> well, he's oh been, gosh. he's yeah. been a huge, um, asset mm-hmm. friend whatever to shane mm-hmm. and yeah. uh mm-hmm. helped help shane find you know maybe just he knew he wanted to do something for people yeah mm-hmm. and dakota kind of put a challenge out there and and to do some things to get to get farther down the path mm-hmm. and yep. and i really feel like um a lot of what shane's done and doing is a direct a direct uh reflection right yeah from, sure from that so yep. he, that's huge and then him Doing the shirts for this fight, yeah, thing. that's, that's, so, huge. that's yeah. so generous and and appreciated because yeah. the shirts would by far be the mo- most expensive thing, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. to have that to have the shirts already like it's just a weight yeah. off my shoulders, you know, right. for sure. And then just to have oh, his support and, right behind you, yeah. so mm-hmm. that's that's huge too. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Well, and I mean, as much as I can say, it's not uh it's been to be able to do that for y'all i can't imagine i mean yes we are donating shirts on the dashes but the amount of work that you all have put into to you know build out a website for people to sign up on having sponsors come on like you guys have done such an amazing job with putting this out for the first year amid a crazy pandemic yeah. that you guys should probably give yourselves a round of applause well, for as well. <laughs> there's some unsung heroes in that aspect. Like um, my cousin made my, the website for us and I've just had so many people that have helped. Well, and then people who you've, you, other yeah, people awesome. you've approached for, for sponsorships yeah. and, and donations, mm-hmm. people are just good yeah you know really yeah. uh willing yeah. to help willing and step to up help. and yep. and it's it's good to see that it's reassuring mm-hmm. and and really changes you to see that mm-hmm. yeah but um and i have to say too just real quick about shane people could you know be down on themselves um think oh poor me whatever but he just seems to always be looking outward how he can 
can try to help someone else. And, mm. and this 5k is part of it. The podcast is part of it. None of it really makes any money or anything for him, but what it does give him is worth way more opportunity, than money, money, yep. you know? So mm-hmm. it's, it's huge. Purpose. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, and it's, it's one of those things where, um, that I can definitely applaud Shane for where he saw a cause and saw kind of, um, I think, I think I'm stealing this from Dakota, but where you, you saw like a gap, a gap in need where you saw something that you could facilitate, whether yeah. it was, um, you saw this, you know, maybe need to do more raising money for like brain injury or whatever it is. You saw mm-hmm. a gap and then took that as like, okay, this is where I'm going to fill in the gap and I'm going to make a difference and make it better. Mm-hmm. And especially with um, so many people having podcasts and doing so many different things that you saw a way to use your platform for a different purpose that, than well, just a podcast. Yeah, that's sure. That's how my brain works, I guess. It's just, <laughs> I, I want to help people, you know? Mm-hmm. I think part of it too, <clears throat> what you gained from being on Dakota's podcast yeah. the first time, yeah. you felt that and you want to yep. give other people that feeling to, to put their story out there. Yeah. Sometimes you keep it inside and, and you need to get it out there. My my Definitely. favorite thing that Dakota ever says about his podcast is he uses that as a platform to give people the chance to share their stories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm a big, I mean, I already mentioned that I love Joe Rogan's podcast. Um, he's, I actually listened to him right before you called me. Mm-hmm. And one of my, one of my all time favorite things he says is, um, kind of crude but it's true where he's like i'm an idiot like i have people on here to educate me yeah mm-hmm. and one thing that um i can honestly say with dakota is after he records with people he's like man they taught me this yeah mm-hmm. or i learned this from them yeah. and like joe rogan does the same thing and i think a yep. lot of people forget that just because a podcast host may know something about a subject, there's a mm-hmm. reason they're still talking to yep. this person. Okay. Like, sure. you want to know more. Yep. Right. You do. Yeah. As soon as you think that you know, you don't really know anything. Yeah. Like, if you think no. you know it all, like, that, that, that nobody can ever be there. There's mm-hmm. always subjects that we can learn on. There's always improvement. There's always new ways of looking at things. And we need other people to help us with that. Well, and I think that, I mean, I just kind of want to bring it back full circle with, you know, people thinking like, oh, I know how to run. Well, maybe try this 30-day challenge starting in October mm-hmm. and you'll maybe challenge yourself with your diet yeah. or yeah, exactly. with a different yeah. way that you're sure. running. Yeah. I mean, there are so many ways that I think until um, someone presents us with the change that we don't realize that we can make one. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. And, and I like your idea mm-hmm. about if you are a runner, run on a different surface, run at a different place, a different mm-hmm. time, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and this will be in November. That could be a different thing for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Run, you know, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. who knows what the weather is going to be in different parts. Live, that's yeah. right. You so. might have a beanie and a coat on. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> there so. might be snow somewhere for you all. Like. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh my goodness. So, um, we are actually interviewing another person today. She, her name is Tyann Middleton Crook, and she is the co-founder of Brainstorm for Brain Injury. Mm-hmm. So we're wow. excited to get the opportunity to have her kind of share about what Brainstorm does for people. Mm-hmm. Right. So that'll be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be good. Give us more insight on, on the, you know, kind of the, what they do and the purpose behind this whole thing and right. why we yeah. we're donating to them. So. Yep. so, wow. I love that you guys are having her on there. Yeah. Just, I, cause a lot of times, um, I mean, so I did philanthropic work in college and a lot of times I would have people be like, okay, I understand that this is going to our, uh, we did breast cancer. Mm. They're like, I understand it's going toward breast cancer, but where is the money really going? But yeah. what do they do? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, and I, and I'm having this. Oh wow, that's going to be awesome yeah. for people who yeah. are signing up and be like, oh, well, they donate the money to yeah. here and there. They do and this, this is what it. they do. Oh, yeah. Awesome. yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. Oh wow! So we're, we're really excited to yeah. have her on the podcast. Yeah, also, mm-hmm. yeah. her in just a little bit. Yeah. So it'll be awesome. Oh, cool. Man, that's exciting. Yep. Wow. All right. Okay. It's well, been awesome um, having you on yes. here. We've we've definitely uh, have a. Uh, gotten some more ideas out and hopefully this 
gives a little bit more clarity of what we're doing and everything for yeah, people watching. And more clar- clarity to why people would run a um, virtual yeah. mm-hmm. race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. For sure. And then also build some excitement and get some. Yep. Uh, yeah. Man- Mandy's a really uh, energetic yeah. and optimistic She's person. Awesome. It's good to talk to yep. you, Mandy. Yep. So, all those listening, yes, make well, sure yes. you share this. Please share this. Yeah. Right. And uh, so we can get this message share out. Share it, like it, subscribe to it, and mm-hmm. comment. Sign up for the 5K. And sign up. Sign up. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Great. Do the 30 day challenge. That's like, this right. is happening for a reason, not just because I feel like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, okay. Mandy. And oh, of course. Thank you for having me. It was an honor. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great day. Yep. See ya. you as well. Thank you. And our next guest for today's podcast is Tyann Middleton Crook. How I know Tyann is she is one of the co founders for Brainstorm for Brain Injury. And she's just going to kind of introduce who she is and introduce um, what Brainstorm does for people suffering from traumatic brain injury. So here she is, Chai Ann. Hi, my name is Chai Ann Crook, like Shane said. And, um, you know, about seven and a half years ago, I was a regular mom. I was doing the school run and running kids to sports and doing laundry every day. And my mm-hmm. um, my son, I picked him up from school. And, well, he was actually in preschool. And we had a couple errands to run. And he, um, we were in a store. And he fell in the store, and um, he was knocked unconscious. Hmm. And when I when I looked at him, when you look at him, I, he looked like he was dead. Yeah. He was unconscious on the wow. floor. He was face down. And um, you know, as a as a mom, you just you have no way to to guess or anticipate how that's going to make yeah. you feel. Yeah. Um. So pretty much all I felt was panic. Yeah. Um, I would love to I say I was imagine. very, <laughs> yeah, I'd love to say I was really calm and composed. I was not. I was, I, I didn't even, I, I don't think I even remember a, a actual conscious thought. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I went over to him and obviously he was not responsive. And um, someone from the store came over and offered to call 911. I don't know why that wasn't the first thing I thought of, yeah. but um, so it was. It was actually really, really fast that an ambulance arrived and mm-hmm. um, they whisked him off to the hospital. Oh, it was. Wow. I mean, it was really just that fast. So, so and how did he? Did he just he slipped and fell, or how did he? Like he fell off of an escalator. Oh, okay. Ooh. Um, that was based upon the surveillance video. Mm-hmm. Um, they estimate he could have fallen anywhere between 12 and 20 feet Ooh. is what I was told. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's um, a long fall. Either one of well, those I, is a long yeah. fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the thing I didn't know at the time, um, I, and I, I never verified this. I actually had a doctor at an Instacare um, because he, he got sick, you know, middle mm-hmm. of the night, and I, I ran him into Instacare, and the doctor that was there said, usually anything over about 10 feet mm-hmm. is fatal, and oh, if it's man. not fatal, it's catastrophic. Wow. So he he looked at us and said, you beat the odds. You guys are miracles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wow. did, there's not a way to know that. There's, you know, I mean, you just, you, sure. you know what you know, and you're like, okay, well, you know, I, I'm in the hospital, and they, they discharge you, and you think you're fine, and mm-hmm. then it was two years later, and he's like, uh, that doesn't happen. Yeah, well, so that's yeah. interesting, because the last guest we had on the podcast fell from the top rung of a 10-foot ladder, Yeah, and he suffered a traumatic brain injury. Yeah. He but landed he, on a pipe, didn't he land on a, a a pipe or a... No, it was, he landed on engine parts. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So uh, it's that 10 foot mark and oh man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I had no idea 10 feet that that number yeah, was magic apparently. So mm. uh, see the things that we learn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. So um, they took him to Riverton hospital mm-hmm. um, in Riverton, Utah first. And I mean, I, I didn't know what was going on. I, there was there was so much activity. There were so many things going on and people and talking and noises. Yeah. And 
Um, they they ran a bunch of tests and did some in- imaging 